Hey guys, got a on here with Four Swords, and it's the Temple of Darkness. Yes, I might be speeding things a little because out of the various times I've looked over the player's guide, this is a very long course. In fact, I'm pretty sure that it's going to hit three videos, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can do anything to prevent that from happening, so there'll probably be quite a few footage cuts, but enough of that technical stuff. You don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about me shooting stuff with a bow. Yes. Things could not have been easier for that little event. It was probably one of the funnest events you'll have in this game. So yeah, this is the Temple of Darkness. Uh, another thing you could say canon from Ocarina of Time. Three in a row now, officially. Um, and actually, that would make sense because in the Kakariko Village for Ocarina of Time, the Temple of Darkness was located underneath it. Although this time now it's a completely separate temple. But uh, yeah, uh, the floor switches is something you'll find a lot in here, as well as... Oh my god, Giant Ball. Roar! Yes, this place has a lot of traps. Mainly, most of the traps are in the form of big bombs in chests. Uh, we need to go to this room anyways, because that guy had a key. And so yeah, it blew up, and let's get the key. Uh, so yeah, this is... Uh, like I said, a very long course, uh, considering it's not the longest in the game, though, but it's up there. Um, yeah, 50. Uh, we fall down here because it actually kind of loops, and oh my god, a snake trap. Lol, and they're all dead. Alright, so we go down here. This loops back to that one room, so let's talk about stuff. Uh, I don't know what to talk about right now. Let's talk about Diet Coke, because I feel like it. I haven't said this enough, I suppose, which is why some people still get surprised, but I am a diabetic. Uh, type 1. Had it since October 2000. And pretty much one of the uh, things that you have to adapt to when you're a diabetic is diet soda. Because people often complain about the bad aftertaste that diet soda often gives. Uh, this is kind of lessened by the invention of newer Cokes such as Pepsi Max and Coke Zero, but I love diet soda. I actually kind of like it more than regular soda now. Although that's because, uh, since I said it's been 2000, so I've been at this for about nine years. Probably more by now. But, uh, yeah, and right now I'm enjoying some of the new Pepsi Max brew. Brew. Well, it's a beer. Beer. But, yeah, I'm trying the new lime invention that they have for the ceasefire. Yeah, it's supposed to go with Doritos, apparently. Yeah, yeah, shameless plug. But, uh, yeah, it tastes pretty nice, too. It is actually pretty good. And here we have a really, really crazy puzzle. One that people normally wouldn't think of. Uh, if you go into this here, uh, you see the secret scrub. Wow, you moved our precious foundation. You dare to touch it. Um, he basically talks about how that is actually the foundation for a giant Ganon statue. Yeah, I skipped it. Who cares? But, um, yeah, if you blow two holes into the thing, it's movable. And using this, you can allow yourself to get past the spikes because you blow them up, and you can push them over that big gap, which is actually pretty funny. It's like a gigantic stone bridge. But yeah, let's use it some more. Yeah, I want to take a swig of my Coke. It's delicious. This is taste coke. And when I mean coke, I mean cocaine. Ah! Alright, so... Uh, it's good to get rid of all the spikes. The spikes don't come back, which is really nice. And I love how that guy walked to his death. But uh, the, the statue thing does uh, reset, though. So, yeah. Yeah, we need the hammer. Yeah, the hammer I got a while back, though. So why am I even talking about that? Uh, I don't know. Oh god, I wish this thing would go faster. Okay, here we got a new enemy. Uh, I don't really give it any name. I, I'm just gonna call it the turtle, because, like, you don't really... Well, I'm sure you fought these before. In fact, I think you fought them back in, um, maybe Link's Awakening? Uh, you can go ahead... You guys can go ahead and fill in the name, because I don't really care. But, uh, yeah, it's very easy. Hit them once, uh, with the hammer. If you hit the side again, though, you know, they'll flip over, as you just saw. 
A uh, really fun way to kill these things is to hit them with the hammer as soon as they fall over. Okay, here's gonna be where one of my footage cuts is gonna be. This is another one of those ball and chain guys, only this guy throws it now. And what you want him to do is to break as many blocks as you possibly can. But this guy, unlike regular ball and chain guys, is incredibly easy to kill. And here's why you want to clear out those blocks, because you get a rain of four shins as soon as you kill them. And the more blocks you've killed, the more, um, you know, destroyed, the more four shins you reach. Yay. Isn't that smart? So yeah, that battle took a while, so I had to skip it. Uh, some buzzy beetles. Kill them easy. Uh, there's also a lot of backtracking in this dungeon, too. Um, you'll see, like, certain rooms several times over. Like this room here, we gotta go like two or three more times or something. It's good to drink Coke when you're commentating, because it keeps your voice wet. Or throat wet, whatever. Um, use the Moon Pearl there. Here is a really fun room. You can have a bunch of these uh, slime things or whatever. I was like, there's like octopus things. But like, they're all in a row, so let's go into box formation. You get to slaughter the whole bunch of them. So yeah, 30... I saw 31 straight kills. <laughs> uh, always enjoyable. And you get a heart container as a reward for your mass slaughtering. Alright, now here's a odd puzzle. Uh, there are blocks in the way, and you go into here, and you... You hit the switches to get it all, but uh, some switches will actually make it worse. So what you want to do is you want to hit either the first, third, and fifth switch, or the second and fourth. I think they both work the same way. Like, you know, either or, it'll unveil the path and allow you to go forward. But make sure you get the hammer before you leave because there are a bunch of those red things still in there. Annoying. Alright, now this room, it's a lot scarier. Uh, it looks a lot scarier than it really is. Uh, the black stuff actually isn't a pit at all, but it's like a warp to a dark world. I don't. I don't. Uh, don't ask me about the science about that. Uh, just go with it. And we find miniature versions of those, uh, you know, cursed Knights of Hyrule. Yeah, they're not that hard. I mean, they're large when you're in the overworld, but, um, you know, they're actually small here for some reason. I don't know why. And that skull is actually an enemy, too. Um, what I don't get is that when you're in the light world, it looks like a gigantic bat. But when you're in here, it's a, it's a tiny little skull. I don't get it. Yeah, we haven't killed all of them. That's why the music is still dramatic and all that. You see that giant bat in the other corner. See, look, it's a giant bat here, but here is a skull. What? What? Yeah, that's what's really crazy. Let's get a treasure because we're pirates, yeah. All right, so key, it's a key, 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 key. Uh, yeah, that portal up there, there's really no use for it. I mean, I suppose it's like the clean way of entering this area, but you don't really have to. And yeah, uh, the key unlocks that block and allows us to go to this little patch here. It's just unassailable otherwise. Yeah, this is the room that has one, this is one of the major intersections. Uh, there's also a major point to this, as this room also has... A, a grand majority of the offensive items in the game. <laughs> in order to get forward though, we first need the Pegasus boots, and then we go into the next room because, it, as you'll notice, there's a cracked block there, and the only way you can beat a cracked block is either with bombs or Pegasus boots, and since the bombs are on that side, yeah. So to solve this puzzle, we need two weapons. First one is the boomerang. To get that one flying off in the distance there, and I'm not close enough. Ah, I fell off. Yeah, there's really no, you know, bad side to falling down. It's kind of like the Lost Woods. It's just those anti-fairy things. And so the next part, we need the bow and arrow. Because there are two switches that we can't reach otherwise. And so, yeah, there's one, and I fell off again. Hooray! I'm a loser. Come on, let me for me. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to talk about. Other than my Diet Coke fetish. And my cake fetish. And my fetish for food. I don't know. 
It's not really a fish. I don't know why I'm saying that. Fetish fetish fish. It's a fun word. Alright, so we need the lamp uh, for our future room, and I'm nearing the amount of time I have left. I'm just looking around. Oh my god, it's another giant bomb. Yeah, you see, like, there's three now, I think. But yeah, let's go into this room. Uh, that treasure chest is uh, secreted away by a button that you can reach because I keep pressing on the buttons. And so, yeah, this is Gaia Christian 9. In the next episode, uh, I will hopefully finish up Temple of Darkness or at least get further into it. So, see you later, guys.